Last hour, transparency. You have to be transparent or willing to be transparent before the Lord. That's where the church got off. The church got off thinking uh, or, or causing people to think that they were better than others and more holier than others and living better than others. And we, we, we got to the place to where we started taking this attitude before the Lord and coming before the Lord thinking that we're better than others. And that's not allowed. He said, esteem others better than yourself. The opposite of that. But our society has, well, the, and then the accuser of the brother, the categorist, makes us categorize sins as if what we've done is not worse than what someone else has done. Well, Lord, I know I make mistakes, but I ain't on crack. <laughs> Amen. And in God's eyes, it's, your, your line is, is no worse than crack, the crackhead. Amen. Your attitude, your backbiting and gossip is just as bad as the murderer. Amen. Your rebellion, the Bible says, is just as bad as the witch. It's as bad as witchcraft when you are insubordinate to leadership and authority. It's witchcraft. I'll preach in here. Last hour transparency. Hey. Psalms 139 and 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me. Even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee. But the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. This passage is telling us that you can't hide from God. Look, somebody say, you can't hide from God. The darkness and the night. If I try to let the darkness cover me, if I try to hide in the night, the night is a light about me in your eyes because I can't hide from you. This is what David is saying. I cannot hide from God. You might as well be transparent because he can see right through you. He knows you better than anyone. He knows the stuff you don't tell anyone. Amen. He knows the stuff you should tell someone. He knows the stuff you shouldn't ever tell anybody. <laughs> he knows you. Look at somebody say, God knows you. He knows you. You cannot hide from him. Knowing who you truly are is very important in this last stand against the enemy. I said it last week. A man that doesn't know himself is dangerous. Lamentations 3 and 40. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. So let us search and try whose ways? Our ways. So when we come before the Lord, we need to let God know that we know what's wrong with us. That's being transparent. A mature believer doesn't need people to tap him on the shoulder and say X, Y, and Z. A mature, seasoned believer will go before the Lord and say, God, I know I shouldn't be like this. And I need your help. Show me how to stop being this way. That's a mature believer. Amen? So, Lamentation said, let us search and try our ways. I'm going to tell you why people can't do this. Because they're so busy searching and trying other people's ways. Amen? Quit trying other people's ways and worry about your wicked ways. Like my dad used to say, wicked ways. My dad had a whole different spelling for stuff. Yeah. Quit looking at everybody else. And look at yourself. Search and try your ways. And turn again to the Lord. The enemy knows something about you that most people do not. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. He know about that mad dog. 
Everybody else just know about the Banaka blast. Man, he's always minty fresh. <laughs> yeah, but the devil knows you've been hitting that mad dog. Because you and him do that together. No, oh, yes, yes, I will preach in here. Yeah, he knows. He knows about that pornography. That's for you and him to do together. Well, know about that jealousy and that gossip and that hatred and that murder in your heart. Wanting something bad to happen to somebody. The enemy knows something about you that most people do not. To truly fight against him, you must do what? You must do what? <laughs> you can't fight the devil and he got something on you. Matthew 5 and 25. Agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the, adverse, the, the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. This passage is basically telling you, don't, don't let this stuff linger. Whoever you've wronged, you go to them and apologize. And if you owe them an explanation, you explain. Amen. Amen. You're keeping secrets from your husband and your wife, you need to go tell them. To truly fight against the devil. Because the devil going to wait till the most inopportune time to bring that junk up. Because you can't really trust him. Because he's the devil. So the enemy knows something about you that most people do not. To truly fight him, you must do what? Take away his secrets. You know, the majority of these, pre you know, I, I mean, a lot of these churches don't need to open up. They don't because the pastors have been hijacked in a lot of them. Like they can't preach the truth because folk got stuff on them. The devil. He got stuff on them and they're in allegiance with stuff. So they can't say stuff or that allegiance that they have is going to come forth. So they're afraid to stand up and preach the truth. Being open and honest before God is the only way to combat the enemy's spiritual attacks against you. Being open and honest. Don't come before the Lord playing like you the person that people think you are. <laughs> he knows better than that. He knows you're a terrible actor. Why not be yourself? Amen. Amen. Take the wig off. Don't even come before him looking like the Instagram girl that you're trying to be. Amen. Just come before him. And that's, that's not literal. I'm, I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, but if that's giving you a complex and you think you somebody when you put the wig on. Amen. Your voice change and you get taller and everything. I mean, if all that's happening with the wig, then yeah, it's got some superpowers. That's your transformation. You need to transform back. Amen. <laughs> Come before the Lord, somebody else. The Lord and the devil looking at you like, who is it? She ain't with me. I don't know who that is. <laughs> uh, but be open and honest before God is the only way to combat the enemy's spiritual attack against you. Hebrews 4, 13. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are what? Naked and what? Exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So all are naked and exposed. So the wig, the makeup, the dress, the, 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 the muscle shirt, the wife beater, whatever you got on, God sees right through it. You're naked and exposed in his eyes. He sees right through that, and he sees who you really are 
And most importantly, he sees who you have been before the meeting with him. And over time, when you do this, when you come before God, not, you know, not being open and honest about who you really are and not really divulging, you know, what's going on in your life and different things, when you try to hide, over time, you'll just stop praying. You'll stop praying and stop talking to him because it doesn't feel right. You're not making any progress. It's like you're talking in the open space. Because he's not, he's not listening to you because you're not being real. You're praying for others and hiding your stuff. Praying for others and hiding who you really are and who you've been. When you know your own failures, weaknesses, and temptations, with God's power, you can defeat them when they arise. Amen? Anybody ever defeated some failures? some weaknesses and some temptations what tempted you 10 years ago you good now weaknesses you had 10 years ago you overcome them I hope some of them some of the past failures you you, you passed those tests you're not gonna fail in that area again but when you think too highly of yourself you will fall prey to them. So this is why people constantly fall back into the same stuff. They think too highly of themselves. If you know your failures and don't have a problem with them, you know, a problem bringing it up to God, then you can defeat them. But when you think too highly of yourself, you're going to always fall back into the same sins. And this is what we can't do. We can't think highly of ourselves as humans because the minute we start thinking we the bomb, the bomb blows up. You just lit the fuse when you start thinking you the bomb. There's nothing wrong with you thinking you look good when you put on certain things. You Okay, you think you cute. There ain't nothing wrong with that. And somebody's like, yes, it is. Uh, I, I don't think it is. I mean, y'all in here looking nice. I mean, that's what the mascara was all about, right? That's why you went to the barber shop. Amen. You don't want to come in here looking like the revenant. You want to, you want to be groomed, get a little part, edge up. You want to look nice. That's why you ironed. You iron. You don't look like you slept on the floor last night. Even though you may have. Well, you don't nobody know your wife putting you on the floor. I hear that goes on. I, I don't. I, I, I've never. I, I, I've never slept. I, I, I don't understand. But I hear that happens. Sleep in the other room and all. I. I, I don't know what that is. I hear, I hear that folks get that upset. So you ironing your shirt in the morning. Well, you want to look good. There's nothing wrong with looking good, looking nice, feeling good about yourself. Hey, Amen. You bought that shirt with your paycheck. That's okay. God wants you to have that. That's dust from the earth, man. You from the earth. You like stuff from the earth. It's okay. All the men that work for God in the Bible, God rewarded them with, with, with things that, you know, that they wanted or, and different things. They were good. So that's okay. But you just can't get it and start thinking you're better than somebody else. Amen. 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 Because all it takes is a <laughs> from God. Like my daddy used to say, blow your brains out. You won't know your ABCs. God can do that. So, you know, we don't get beside ourselves. But that's why we're in a fellowship. That's the beautiful thing about being in a fellowship with strong brothers that can handle it. Amen. God, get the weak ones out because it's, they got to be strong so we can come tell you, brother, you, 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 you smelling yourself, bro. You know, take it down a peg or two. Yeah, you right, man. I, you right. My chest hair was showing. Let me button it up. <laughs> Just put the taco meat up, bro. Put the... Put the aquarium rocks back up.
<laughs> Button it up. Came in the men's fellowship. College just spread out. Brother, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> this is a men's fellowship. <laughs> Why the collar just wide and spread out? <laughs> collar resting on your shoulders. <laughs> Yeah, so you don't want to think too, <laughs> think too highly of yourself. When you think too highly of yourself, that's when you're going to fall prey. Proverbs 16 and 5, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. So once you're proud in your heart and think you something, you're an, abom you're an abomination unto the Lord. And it's going to take God. He loves you so much that he's going to chasten you and get all of that out of you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And brothers come to me all the time. You know, y'all know who y'all are. Great percentage of brothers that's at this church. And I've told you. I've had to come to you and tell you, bro, you're a little proud. I see you, you're being a little proud. Proud. You're being a little proud. God going to take everything and he's going to bust you down to nothing. You know, it's best to just listen to the message because I'm going to do it the nice way. I'm going to tell you about it, give you an opportunity to go change it. God's not going to do that. He's going to take something you want and love and it's just going to be gone. Amen. And he's going he's to bring you down a peg or two. And when God does it, it hurts. But he does it because he loves you. And he don't want that pride to lead you to a fall, lead you to hell. Amen. What's even worse is when you desire for others to think highly of you. Now, this is the next level. Now it's time for you to get people worship. That's why a lot of these churches are closed now. Because it stopped being about the worship of God, and it started being about worship of the, the preacher. Can't have an anniversary for everything. Yeah. First black preacher in the neighborhood anniversary. Just can't, just can't have an anniversary. But a lot of them, it just became about the money. Y'all don't know how blessed you are to be here. Amen. Amen. Now listen. <laughs> listen. You need to give. You need to give for your sake. The giving is for pointing at somebody to say, that's for your benefit. Because the minute you start shaving back, you're going to feel it. God's going to make it up in the church with somebody else, but you're going to feel the shave back. You will feel it. So I don't, you don't hear me getting up here preaching money messages. I don't have to do it. I was telling somebody the other day, God has blessed me, given me everything. Me and my wife talk about it all the time. We, we ask each other, is there something you want? And she said, no. I tell her, it's nothing I want. I have absolutely everything I want. Everything. Everything. But let me tell you something. Don't clap. That ain't, that ain't like I'm bragging. It's for a reason. Because when I was doing the truth behind hip-hop, traveling, I'd be in front of audiences, sometimes 10,000 folks. The prime opportunity to ask everybody for $5. And I did that for 20 years and never took an offer, ever. I've never stood in front of a congregation and took up an offer. My honorarium was $1,500, $2,000, I think it was, maybe three if I went overseas or something like that, which most of them didn't give me that. And I left it at that. No matter how many people I saw, I didn't get up, oh, we got to renegotiate this. No, I left it at that. Man, whatever it is, because that, it, that wasn't important to me. I knew God was going to take care of me. Yeah. And I would... Walk through those congregations, no security, not just walking through, shaking it, praying for people, casting demons out, all of that. And so I didn't have to take offerings or anything because God was going to give me what I needed. And that's all I wanted anyway. All I wanted, and I would pray, I don't want anything that I can't handle. 
But what, what is even worse is when you desire for others to think highly of you. So when you lift yourself up and want somebody to think you are the bomb, that's when it gets real bad. Because that's against what God wants for us. That's pride. God can't use a proud heart. Matter of fact, that's one of the things he says he hates. I always study that passage in Proverbs 6 because I just don't want to be on that list. I just don't want God hating me because it's going to show in the way I live my life. Yeah. If God hates you, you're in trouble. If he hates what you're doing, you're in trouble. Your life's not blessed. When public opinion is, is your concern, God's opinion will not be. Let me say that again. When public opinion is your concern, God's opinion will not be. Galatians 6 and 3, for if a man think himself to be something, oh Lord, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. We are all sinful beings and we deserve death. But God's power can make us a good representative of him in the earth if we hide behind it. Hide behind God's power. Isaiah 6 and 5. Then said I, woe is me. This is when Isaiah saw the Lord. He said, this, is, this should be our reaction when his presence comes before us. Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. Is this the prophet? One of the greatest prophets of all times? Isaiah saying, I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. This is our disposition when we come before God because God is so holy. It makes us ratchet. Can I use that word? His holiness makes you ratchet. Undone, that's ratchet. Though we are sinful beings, if we face this fact and rely on God's power, we can actually live for him and what? And what? Forsake sin. So, even though we're sinful beings, if we just face this fact, I'm a sinful being. I don't mean I'm a sinful being, so I might as well go on and sin. That's not what I'm saying. You have faced the fact that, yeah, I have had sin. And I am, yes, yeah, yeah, I, I am prone to sin. So if I can face that fact, then I can put myself in a position where I know when I am weak, he's what? He's strong. So that means I have to show that I am weak. I have to go before God and let him know that I am weak. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It don't mean go out and be weak. You've already done that. It just means when I come before God, I can be weak and vulnerable. And the human that I am face my faults before him. Because God, the only way I'm going to make it is with your power. That's what he wants to hear from you. That's what he wants to hear from you. God got mad at, I was reading about Jehoshaphat. He got mad at Jehoshaphat because Jehoshaphat went and partnered up with some, you know, with uh, Israel. Because he was king of Judah, I believe. And he was partnered up with Israel. And Israel were, you know, that was Ahab. Hey, worshiping false gods, and you know Jezebel was controlling that. So God didn't like him even partnering up with him. He was like, because what the, the, the prophet or the seer that came to him told him, you used to just rely on the power of God. Now you feel you need help. N no, when you're weak, he's strong. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. So you come before God and be weak. I tell God every day, I can't do this. There's no way. I can't make this happen. I can't handle these four. There's just no way I can do this. But in my weakness, God, I know you'll be strong. 
And not only will you be strong, but you will get all the glory. Ain't nobody glorying in weakness. Romans 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the what? The things of the spirit. Your flesh cannot do this. Look at somebody and say, your flesh can't do this. When we fully confess to God who we are and lose our fear of the enemy's accusations, you took the mad dog from him. Right? You don't buddy up. Look, somebody's like, I'm not answering that. But you're not buddying up with the devil. You're not, listen, you, you can't do that. Because his accusation stops you from standing strong in the faith. You slipping up and cussing in secret. Devil's writing them down every time. So when you get before the saints, you don't have the power. It's time to pray. Somebody's sick. You can't even pull up a prayer because you've been so dirty before you got there. Devil's just defeating you. You're about to lose your job and lose your finding. You can't even must up a prayer because you know you've been where you shouldn't have been. Devil's standing foot in your neck. I dare you pray. Because I got some stuff I bring up I dare you say anything. Yeah. Whole family about to break up. Husband, wife, y'all about to just split and can't nobody catch hands and pray because of what's going on in secret. Devil whispering to both, you can't pray. What an accusation. He's the accuser of the brethren. The Bible says he does it day and night. He never stops. Yeah. I didn't wonder why your prayers ain't answered. I tried praying. I hear people tell me that. I tried praying. Okay, was there a limit on it? Did it expire? I tried praying. Well, your prayers ain't going away because the devil's foot is in your neck. Because you and him been sinning together. So, when we fully confess to God who we are and lose, lose our fear of the enemy's accusations, we can function in this world with confidence and godly esteem. When you take care of the devil, look, devil, me and you, we, we through. I'm past this stage. We ain't doing this no more. I'm tired of you hindering my prayer life. I'm tired of you hindering my blessings. I'm tired of you hindering my progress. I'm tired of being on first base all the time. Ten years, I'm still on first base because you won't let me cross home plate holding my secrets. It's time for me to deal with this and let this go. Let us therefore come boldly into, unto the throne of grace that we may obtain what? Mercy and find what? Grace when? To help when? In the time of need. And this is what the devil is wanting to stop. He wants to stop this prayer. He wants to stop this event of you going before God boldly. You can't go boldly with secret stuff. You can't go boldly in cahoots with the enemy. You can't go. He wants to stop this from happening. Because if he can stop this from happening, you can't get the grace you need. You can't get the mercy you need. Yeah, that's why the Catholic Church was created. For you to go confess your sins to a priest so they'll never make it to God. And you die in your sin. The devil wants us to fear him instead of God. So he uses our unconfessed sins and true self-image against us. So you're fearing the wrong one. Instead of you fearing God, you're fearing the devil. And what the devil knows. Is the devil above God? Then why are you afraid of the devil? And this makes it very hard for a person to stand for truth. 
And this is why our day, this is why men are like that, just folding like lawn chairs, everything, because of unconfessed sins and their true self-image that the devil is using against them, making them feel like you're going to ruin your self-image if you come clean and tell the truth. So you got to give up. You got you to gotta confess your sins to God, and you got to kill that self-image because you are nothing. Let me tell you something. You're fooling yourself. That image, please. Nobody thinks that but you anyway. The dog know better. He don't do nothing you say. <laughs> yeah, but the devil wants you to fear him. That's why he wants you to live in unconfessed sins. First John 3 and 8. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to do what? Do what? Destroy the works of the devil. Summary! Being transparent before God makes us invisible before man. Let me say that again. <laughs> Being transparent before God makes us invisible before men. That means you give up, if you give up your self-image to God, you won't worry about it when you get in front of men. Because God knows the real you in secret. Then he'll operate through you in public. When we can reduce ourselves in God's presence, his image will shine through us in the company of others. The problem is that because of the internet, uh -oh, social media, and failed upbringing, we are taught to shine from a very young age for attention. Shine. Taught to shine. We seek the applause and the approval of man all of our lives. And now the church is promoting this behavior as well. Folks come to church to shine. People come to church looking to excel, stand out, and rule over people. Yeah, they want a position in church to rule over people. You know, a lot of men pastor to rule over people because they have no rule in their home. Wife is just practicing witchery all the time, controlling everything. They don't go home. They stay at church five days a week. There's something happening every night. They don't want to be home. Nobody's listening to them at home. Woman in control, Jack. I preach the truth in here. Because of this, the enemy will keep our errors, failures, and past sins in the holster, ready to threaten us to prevent us from standing for truth. Because people seek the approval of men, they buckle under this extortion and back down from standing in fear of people disapproving of them because of their failures. If you're close to God, you don't care. If you're close to God, you already know you're a failure. See, I can't get the head clap. You close to God, he's already showed you. He showed you that you a failure. He showed you that you need grace and mercy every day. He's already told you that. So you don't really worry about what people have to say. Why would I worry about what people have to say? If I know I got to repent every day, if I'm going to come before God, God is holy. He's already shown me myself. And I present my body a living sacrifice. Yeah, so they buckle under the extortion of folks coming, threatening them, devil threatening them. Oh, I'm exposed. I'm in, and they buckle, fold up, because they worried about what people think about them in fear of people disapproving of them because of their failures. The crazy part is that we all have sinned and have past failures. So it should not matter if we have repented and been forgiven. Why are you worried? Look at somebody and say, why are you worried about it? Look at somebody and say, why are you worried about what they think? I mean, has anybody come to the grip of the fact that they need Jesus? Ain't that why we in here? 
Without him, we're nothing. Because we have been indoctrinated with self-absorption all of our lives, many would rather let God down than their peers. So you're not going to preach the gospel because you're worried about what somebody is going to say? So you more worried about letting God down than folks talking? I hope you understand that folks going to talk regardless. If you were perfect and never made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wonder what they doing to never make a mistake. <laughs> then you make a mistake. Mm-hmm. See, they made a mistake. Then you get forgiveness for the mistake. Mm, no, don't try to repent now. Mm-hmm. What is The enemy stops preachers from preaching, teachers from teaching, parents from disciplining, the pastors from admonishing by threatening to shatter their self-image before those that hold them in high regard. Folks afraid to parent. Discipline their own kids because of what people might say. Worried about the mother-in-law and the father-in-law and oh. Oh, teachers scared to teach because of what the parents going to say. Preachers won't preach. They might find out that I'll carry around a pair of dice every now and then. <laughs> Dude, take them dice out your jacket pocket. <laughs> Until we can fully I mean, till we can be fully human and transparent before God, we will continually seek the approval of man and fail at gaining God's approval. You can't have both. You, you have to make a choice. Do I want man's approval or God's approval? Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't get it. Every Sunday I stand up here, I have to make that choice. Every time this mic touches my hand, I have to make the decision. Do I want y'all's approval or do I want God's approval? I'm choosing God. Amen. I done seen how folks can be. Y'all love me one day and the next day. We must be willing to own our past failures and current struggles before God. It may be current and you got to own that before God. When you go before him, you got to bring it up. Don't wait for him to bring it up. <laughs> you bring it up. Own your current struggles. Be vulnerable before him. You can trust him. We must be willing to confess to God who we really are and agree with God's spirit when it searches our hearts. So you can't just come before him and confess who you really are, what's really wrong with you how weak you are, how you just want people to think something and it's not really true. You want them to think you're better. You want them to think you're stronger. You want them to think this and that and you know none of that's true. You got to open up and tell God that, Lord, it's not true. It's a lie. That's not who I am. That's not the real me. The real me is scared. The real me is afraid. The real me is hurt. The real me, Lord, I, it's, it's, I'm just jacked. And then you have to agree with God's spirit when he searches through your heart and start finding things. You have to agree. Take that, Lord. I'm going to take it. You got to let it go. When we can be honest before God to the point of sorrowful repenting and change, we will no longer worry about what the devil can do to us. When you are open with God, the devil has no ammunition. You take it away from him. In this last hour, we must take our lives back from the enemy and place them totally in God's hands. Only he can wash away our sins and shine his glorious light through us. Amen.
Luke 12 and 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is what? Hypocrisy. Beware of the hypocrites, the Pharisees. In our time, it would be the Hebrew Israelites and them, them folks. Just hypocrites. Because they're practicing the law and still in sin. Practice the law and beat their wife. Practice the law and cuss you out. Practice the law and don't pay child support. Practice the law and won't work a job. Practice the law and don't pay their bills. Practice the law and won't take care of their children. Hypocrites. This is Jesus talking. Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, these law keepers, these folks that look good, that's looking like they're great, looking like they're grand. The hypocrites. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Wherefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be what? Heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them mm, that can kill the body. And after that, have no more they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Everyone stand to your feet. Transparency. Some of y'all need help with this. No, you do. Because it's tough because the world has stigmatized it and taught us how to look a certain way and act in front of others. And if we're too vulnerable, if we show that we're too sinful or we've, if we show that people are going to think this and say that and think this, but the scripture just told me, don't be afraid of them. You only fear God. Amen? Amen? Listen, let's just get before God on this transparency thing. If you need help with this, just come on up and we just, I'm just going to pray, pray with you and trust God. Just help me be transparent before you, Lord. Help me show myself to you, Lord. You know, your mom, your dad may have propped you up when you were young, and you may need it, the likes and the views of the Internet. And I don't know what it is, but right now God wants us to be able to come before him transparent so we can just, hey, this is who I am. This is who I am. Failures and all, hurt and all, issues and all, problems and all. This is who I am. This is who I am. And without the power of God, I can't be any better. But with the power of God, if I'm able to confess before him, he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think. Amen? Amen. So everyone just bow your heads. It's just repentance time. We're going to repent before the Lord. God, forgive us of our sins, anything that we've done, whatever sinful practices there's been what we're doing and in done in secret, hidden, away from everyone. It's so shameful. It makes me feel so bad. It makes me feel ashamed. God, I just want this out of my life. So we give you that first. Lord, take this out. Get this out. Show us the root of it so we can deal with the problem. Help us to, if we need to talk to somebody, God, give us the person to talk to. If we need help, whatever it is. If it's our mother and our father we need to talk to, God. Give us just... Help us to be transparent to them. And most importantly, help us to be transparent, Father God, to you, to be able to bring these things to you, whatever it is. God, we want to bring our true selves to you. Father God, we want to bring the hidden person to you, the secrets. We want to disable the enemy. We want to unarm. We want him unarmed. We want to remove what he has and just be open, honest, and transparent before you. Father God, so we give you everything right now. 
we open our hearts up, the deepest places, the darkest places, the hidden places, the secret places. Father, we pray right now that you would invade those areas with your presence. No more hiding from you. No more, God. We confess it to you. We give it to you. Make us better in that area. Father God, heal us, deliver us, and set us free like only your power can. And we give you glory and honor this moment as you search our hearts. Just let them search you right now. Search our hearts, God. Search our hearts. The reason others are reacting to us the way they do. Search our hearts. The reason, Father God, that so many of our relationships fail. Search our hearts. The reason we end up in this same place over and over, search our hearts. We are transparent before you. The reason our prayers aren't being answered, the reason our prayers aren't working, the reason we keep reverting, the reason we keep failing in the same area year after year, month after month, day after day. Search us, Lord, as we come before you, transparent. Let your Holy Spirit probe us, God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost probe us, God. Probe our lives. Search every area and bring up what needs to come up, and we will cast it away. We trust you with our heart right now. We trust you with that area right now. We weren't able to do that before, but we are tired, Father God, running from you. Search our hearts. Search our hearts. And I pray right now that all fear of the enemy, fear of what the enemy can do, fear of what the enemy can say, I pray against that right now. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So I pray that your mind will be sound, that you will have power of the Holy Ghost, and that you will love the way God loves. And we rebuke the spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of how the enemy can make us look. Fear of how the enemy, what he might say. Fear of what the enemy might do. Father God, we are not afraid of the devil. But we fear you because you are greater than he. And God, we give you glory and honor in this moment for what you're doing now and what you're going to continue to do even when we leave this place. Continue to work on us and reveal to us what needs to be revealed. So once and for all, it will be dealt with and we can be transparent before you and declare and stand for truth before others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.